result of our time together with Dr. Perk. And so we're about to get started. Stay tuned. And I, and I know you'll be blessed. Amen. Let's go close to the pros. Well, good morning. Welcome again to uh, another edition of Defining Moments. I'm your host, Larry Nix, Defining Moments, where we seek to encourage, inspire, help to identify your purpose, and restore hope. I am very delighted. I'm excited to have as my very, very special guest. You know, when I asked the Lord, um, you know, if he really wanted me to do this program and he sanctioned me to do this program, I said, Lord, uh, if I am to do this program, you know that I'm obedient uh, there are people that I would love to have on this program. I know that they have a very busy schedule. They have a lot going on. But, Lord, there are people that uh, have made a difference. They, they have made a sustainable, impactful, impressionable difference, not only just in the kingdom, but in, in the world. And, uh, and, and their life has made a difference and is making a difference. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted for those of you that are viewing us and certainly for those of you that are watching, uh, that are listening to us uh, on our various affiliates. We, we, we thank you for joining us. I'm delighted to welcome as our special guest, Dr. John M. Perkins. Uh, and this is what I said on my blast this morning, on my Twitter blast this morning. I said, Dr. John M. Perkins is an American Christian minister, civil rights activist, Bible teacher, author, philosopher, and community developer. He is the founder and president emeritus of the John and Vera May Perkins Foundation with his wife, Dr. Vera May Perkins, also known as Grandma Perkins. He is the co-founder of the Christian Development Association. And despite being a third grade dropout, Dr. Perkins uh, is, has been recognized for his work with 14 honorary doctor degrees from schools including Belhaven, Lynchburg University, Wheaton College, Gordon College, T Taylor University, and Northern Seminary. He has served on the board of directors of World Vision and Pre Prison Fellowship. And Dr. Perkins has served under five United States presidents. That's a whole lot. I was telling our producer earlier, uh, when I did a little work, even though I've known Dr. Perkins for, all, uh, for over 30 years, I, I wanted to make sure that I did my homework and we spent our time well and didn't mismanage our time. I did a little research on Dr. Perkins, and I just became exhausted at reading Dr. Perkins. Man, what, what a blessing you are, what a blessing you have been, and we'll talk about it a little later. Dr. Perkins, I'm in the studio with him, and those of you who can see us on, on uh, YouTube and Facebook, I'm holding up a book, two books that he has written, among many books. One such book is Dream With Me, and we'll talk about that a little later, and also One blood. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted again to have Dr. Perkins as my special guest. Dr. Perkins, welcome to Defining Moments with Larry Nix. Well, it's great to be here and my greatest accomplishment I consider in life is the quality of friends that I have met in life and I, I'm going to make you, Larry, one of those friends. But well, Dr. Perkins, I am honored. I was talking with someone earlier and I said, you're the kind of person that, you know, I, I don't suppose that I have anything to say. I am honored. Uh, and when you get in the presence of, of, um, of, of someone that has journeyed and someone that has to say, as a student, I, I, I ask a couple of questions and, and I shut up and listen. So I don't want to mismanage our time, as I said earlier. But, but I, I want to make sure that those that are listening are really blessed. This program is about providing hope. It's about encouraging people and finding their center. Uh, you, you referred to it earlier as a moral center. We live in an era, we live in a time, in a season that there's so much bitterness going on. People are divided. People are, are frustrated. They're talking at one another. They're not listening. They're talking over one another. Nobody is listening. And so I think it's such a wonderful opportunity for us to have you on this program. As you would say, that God is, is, is ever trying to bring us back to the center of things. What, first of all, before we put a little backstory to your life, what, what does that mean? God is trying to bring us back to the center. 
and more specifically the moral center of things. What what do you mean when you say that? Uh, I'm really saying that God rules in the kingdom of man and he created this earth to inhabit his life and he put that life into humanity and he gave the stewardship of the earth to man and so there have to be a moral center in order to keep life moving in a way that enhance growth and the quality of life Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and they may have it more abundantly. The other side of that is death, death and killing and violence. And so there is a more center. You could call that peace. Okay. Both peace individually. Okay. And then peace among each other. Okay. Uh, I came. Jesus said to bring peace and I send you out as peacemakers not as the world makes peace so that that's the moral center and we lose that moral center a nation is at that point beginning judgment in fact I really believe when that reaches that uh, number I don't know the number and there is not those people there to make that more center known. We call that the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's the center of it. That is the good news. And that God is going to bless those. In fact, he's going to bless those that study his word and obey his word. And that's how he actually keeps the more center going. So, so, so then when I think about, you, you know, your, your idea of the, that moral center then there has to be a place that God gets fed up with us being off of the moral center. Because I think of the time of the flood, of, of Noah's flood. I think of the time that he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. I, th I think of that. Is it, is, is it the fact that, that we, humanity, becomes so wicked uh, and, and his efforts are so futile that he has to eliminate in order to begin again? That's sort of the way it has worked. Okay. And that's sort of a, a lived out truth on earth. You could even kill that back to Adolf Hitler. Okay. And, and that's what makes it so strange now. Over six million people was killed and he was going to set up a third right, uh, a thousand year reign of bigotry and racism. God had to bring that to an end. Now we are trying to restore that and saying that that is the same as anything else we got. So do you believe that we, without having a doomsday kind of mentality, uh, do, you, do you believe that we're on a collision course now? Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Even what we call our evangelicalism have sold out to this moral center. Now, what is easing up in this moral center has been the Russian thing, what is in, that uh, has been our politics and all that. But what always goes this and going to dominate the news from now on is sex. Mm -hmm. Sex. That's the Now explain thing. that. Now explain that. that, sex, that sex dominates the news. Sex dominates the news. Okay. That, that ought to be one of the most precious ideas of life because it is somewhat the source, at least, of the development of life as God planted. Okay. So it's holy and it's wonderful. And we're to get married and with the married people and stay with them. Right. The, the one of I'm more uh, centered off is the family. Right. It's family. It's seventy-five. That we have degraded what what was decent and pure sex and and have made it unholy. And made it unholy. And it, and, and it, it is... Now, boy, the idea of life is so precious. The idea of life is so precious. And so we are at the door of sin. And, and then we raise all these children are born without that nurture, without that family love in our society. It destroys the neighborhood. 
It destroys the community. It fills up the jails. Well, Dr. Person, your your whole life has been spent on family development, community development, economic development. What is the answer? Uh, and, and, and I know we're going all over the place yes. and, and and viewers and listeners just, just kind of tune in because just to have a conversation is, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's fruitful enough. So what is, the, what is the answer for us to slow down from hitting this collision course? Uh, because us against them, them against us, black against white, white yes. against black, Republicans against Democrats, Tea Party, Libertarians, uh, Nazi skinheads, uh, you know, Black Panthers. What, what, what is the answer? The answer is what the answer always has been. It's the good news of God coming and came to bring us the good news that a Savior is born. And if he's going to give his life for sin so we can accept him and be born again and start over. So it's still the good news. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. It is this gospel message. It is the story of God. It's the story of God coming to save humanity and to keep them at the center. And the church is the steward of that. The, the, church, the, the church is the steward Okay, so of define that. church. Define church is those people that in the biblical, at Pentecost, when he sent the Holy Spirit and he spoke all the people represented there, hear God's voice, and from there they went out in a, to tell the world about Jesus. Unfortunately, and, and the reason why I say it is because unfortunately some people believe that the zip code is the church or the building is the church uh, or I, jo I joined this particular church and so that gives me uh, the kind of intimate and personal relationship with the Lord. That That is the church. And you're saying a zip code is not the church. Well, well it, 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 a zip code and a church building could be where the church meets. But the church is those universal people who have taken Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. And if when they come together, they become the visible church where two or three gather together. The building is not the church. It's the assembly. It's significant. We can name the building after we meet God. We might name it as a place where we met God. It becomes an Ebenezer. It becomes a Bethel. Right. But it, but it is not it. It is not it. So then let me ask you this. So do you believe that the reason that the world is off-center, our society is off-center, is because the ecclesia is off-center? Oh, no doubt. The church is off-center. It's my people who are called by my name. And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light, and I'm the truth about life, but I am the light. And if you don't live within a sense of that more truth center, uh, judgment is going all the way at the same time. You, you're, not, you're being judged now. Oh, yeah, that might be another coming judgment, but, but you're being judged already. So that means there's no way that anyone can escape judgment. No, you can't escape judgment. Sin itself. Is a rebellion against God. But now, keep in mind, let, let, don't make this doom thing. Right. Uh, God loves us. Now, you said that earlier, off the, off the air. You said something powerful. You said God, and we have a minute before we go to break. You said that God loves the sinner and the saved. In fact, you said he loves the sinner even more than the saved. Oh, that's his heart. Now, explain that one. He came not him. He said it. He said he didn't come to save the righteous, but born sinners to repent. They shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from the sin. Now, the whole world, in a great sense, is his people because he created us there. Dr. Perkins, stop right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in two minutes more of, of defining moments with our very special guest, Dr. John M. Perkins. 
a Mississippi treasure. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. More defining moments. So for those that are listening, Dr. Perkins, for those that are listening and watching us, okay, you're saying that God loves you too and 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 you're a sinner. He that's why he came down from heaven. But I but, but you don't understand. I've done some <laughs> stuff that I if it got out, I'd be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. But that's what he came for. He came to rescue you. Look at Hallelujah. Look at that. I have found attack. him whom my heart so long had tried. Jesus alone satisfies my longing. That's what he came for. He loves us. There is no end to God's love. For God so loved the world. Oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was all of us lost, but now found. You know, how great they are. Mm, how great they are. And so God's love that need to be a message with a prophetic consequence voice you are sort of somewhat condemned already so I don't have to overdo that on you you're condemned because you didn't believe on the name of the only begotten son of God it is God's love. Mm. This, and what, we don't replace love with hate. Mm. This mm. was the first time in my 87 years that hate won the President of the United States. The one who could cut the other one down and make them look little and condemn them is in charge. And, and, and that's ruling our nation. And the Evangelical Church has adopted that. We are in darkness. Well, we need God. We need, Now, you think God is going to absolute judge us right now? I'm not saying that. Because I think he's still, his hand is straight out there. He's still saying, come unto me. Come unto me. His hand, read the prophets, read Amos. Because I've called and you refused, I stretched out wow. my hand. No man will glory. But then he says, uh, after he even says, prepare to meet God, he said, but my hand is stretched out there. Wow. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Defining Moments. I'm your host, Larry Nixon. I'm very decided, excited to have a living legend, an icon, uh, a, a philosopher. A sinner. A saved by grace. <laughs> you know. A sinner. And, 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 and Dr. Burgess, that's really why I didn't want to spend all, the, all of this time, precious time, on your 15-page bio. Right. You know, God has used you, but man, when I'm around you and when I've been around you, around people... You make people feel like they're the only person in the room. Now, you know, that in these last days, I know I haven't been like that all the time. But in these last days, I'm feeling, because I've been feeling that I wasn't loving my neighbors or myself because of so many drug pushers around me. And I see what they were doing. And you say you're eight, and you say early eight, 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 I'm eight, eight to seven. But now, you know what I did? I said, God. You ask me to love my neighbors, I love myself. And I'm not quite loving them that much. You know what I started doing? I tried to start loving God more. Mm. I began to try to say, God help me. I love you. And now I look at my neighbor and they look different. And when I go by the drug house, I go by there and I stop a little while. And, and try to talk to him. So then, let me say this. Let me, let me let me say this because when we were driving over here, man, I was I was so blessed. We we're driving over here, and I said, Doctor Perkins, you know, um, I feel as a student, and you as a teacher. So I'm quiet because I gotta listen. And you said you said something so profound. You said 
But that's how issues start when one seemed to, to put himself as a superior over the other. Rather than spending time appreciating our equality. The, our equality. And, and our esteem of them. Uh, I already know that God has saved me by his grace. I, I already know I'm his child. So what, what am I about? I'm trying to get you to see both I am a child of God. But you have you also is creating his image. And you're mixed up in your foolishness and your sin. And if I can get to see your somebodyness that you that you have value, that you was creating God's image, that's esteeming and receiving each other and loving each other. That love is of God. Love is a substance. Love is of God. He that loves is born of God. And he love not, and love and love is an action. Uh, it's an action. And 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 I'm not doing it as well as I want to do it. I'm not doing it as well as I want to do it. I need God's help. And we need each other to encourage each other. And the Bible says not to forsake the fellowship of ourselves together. And much the more as we see the day approaching. Dr. Perkins, listen. On Sunday mornings, Sunday morning is considered one of the most segregated days, hours of the week. We have places that we go, white folk are here, black folk are here, you know, uh, and there's there's really less intentionality about making sure that we make our relationships intentional um, and not that we should be on a, a artificial and superficial movement to integrate ourselves because we're trying to meet a number or, or you know, we're trying to look like something that we're really not, but um, do you think God is pleased with the way our churches look on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights? It'd be better for me to say what caused this. Okay, let's talk about that. What caused this? We are accepting a lie that there's two or three different races. Particularly in America, there's a black race and a white race. And the black race is inferior to the black, white race. That's violent. And, and, and so-called racial reconciliation has failed us because it's the reconciliation to God and God then gives us the privilege to become his reconcilers to each other in the world. But we, we, and we can't do this for, for God. But if you make the two assumptions that there are two races, that the Lord thou God is one. And I have created one humanity to represent me on earth. I don't want no other. I don't want no two. So we done made white folks God to black folks. And we black folks have made white folks the devil. And, and, and so we uh, beat the wind. In fact, we are streaming at each other in life. The big mistake that we believe that there are two human races. That don't come with the Bible. That's why the genealogies are there. That's the genealogies are there to show us that we came from Adam. Jesus Christ is the second Adam. We were the first Adam. We sinned. And now this God incarnated himself in Jesus Christ to save his people. They shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people, all people from their sin. So we it, think it, that there are two races in the world. So, so that's our lie. So, so, so we're fighting. First of all, the enemy's battle by uh, propagating or promoting the we, lie. We, we are start, the lie and truth. The lie, and you can't make, you can't renegade the races because they're not but one. What are you talking about? The assumption is bad. And, and we we know the, the one that we got to integrate to is the white race. We don't already profile us, made us slaves, and then hold us in captivity, and now saying to us, y'all can be reconciled to us if you do all this stuff. That ain't fair for a child. You, you're not saved by your good works. You say by grace. It's it's not it's not fair to assume or, or to uh, uh, to to develop a relationship 
from the premises that you are lesser or that person is greater. And, and, and that's what sin is made out of. Sin is made out of the lust of flesh, come my flesh. Come closer to the mic. The, the lust of my flesh, the lust of my eye, and the pride of life. Those were the three temptations. That's what we fall into sin when we are pulled away with our own sin and temptation. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So and the pride of life makes me better than you. You'll be okay if you could be like me. Man don't lack equality. God created us that way. Our rebellion is being the representative of God in an equal way. That we are made in his image. We're made to reflect God in the world. And we don't like that. We want to be God. God told Eve in the Garden of Eden that, that, that if you eat of this tree, you're going to know what's right and wrong. Well, God made a mistake. I'm going to taste of this. <laughs> what you talking so about? So, in other words, you know, you know what? I remember long ago, I was in a meeting, and, and one, of the, one of the leaders of the church said, I was saying, well, according to the Word of God, and he says, I don't care what the Bible says. Oh, well, that's you got a fool. The fool has said in his heart there is no God and no sense in believing him. In coming to God, you must believe that he is. You, must, you got to believe that God is good when you come out of him. Dr. And Perkins. so if you don't believe God is good, well, so you you are lost, lost, lost. And, 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 and it's, he, he, you're so lost, he let you go in his own way. And that's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that you're so lost that God will let you go in your own way. Oh, yeah. But that reached the time. Because I've called and you refused, I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded. You said it not on my counsel. You would none of my reproof prepare to meet you, God. Listen, I, you have a couple of books here. Yeah. And I want to talk about your books. Okay. All right. I ladies like and, that. Ladies and gentlemen, in particular for those that are watching us, um, it's his first book. And you have many, many books. But the ones that I'm holding up, Dream With Me, Race, Love, and the Struggle We Must Win. What is that about? That's about what I'm saying. That we got to come back to we're one human race. And that racism is a result of that false premise. And so we got to racism is the res is a result of the false premise that there are multiple races. That's it, and that one is superior to the other. The one is white, and the other is black. Other races, other ethnic group don't think the same way you think about a race. That's why they succeed. They don't come here thinking they're inferior. For a minute, for, a, for for example, the Asian, the Asian, they think they at least equal. At least, at least eco, at least eco. And and but so how do you, so so Dr. Perkins, how do you have a conversation with someone that proposed themselves to be superior over you? Well, you how do, how do you, you bring you, them you, to a level that? Wait a minute. Well, you you really you're so far off of moral center. But you 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 really now because there are some people that are listening and that are watching that they have relationships or their environment with people that think of themselves superior to others. Well, I got to think that God also is a spirit and that God wants this done, that God wants this done. And so I believe that the Holy Spirit takes the truth and the word of God and apply it to people longing and give them hope and give them passion and give them concern. So when you're preaching the word of God, you're not just preaching in your own power. The unction of the spirit, the spirit itself, the word of God itself convicts the soul in life. So when you're talking about teaching the word of God, you're, you're and presenting the word of God, you're not talking about preaching yourself. Right. You're preaching the spirit of God. Yeah. So. And and so the way to the way to bring commonality and fellowship and re relationship is to understand that 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 Jesus is our center. He's the center. He's oh. our, he's he's our natural center. He's the center. He's the moral center. He's a controller. He's ruling in the kingdom. If we can of meet man. him there, then we can meet one another there. Oh yes, 
Oh, you got to be them first. So the, the burden of mankind is to know God and to make him known. Ladies and gentlemen, hope, listen, we'll be right back. More defining moments with Larry Nix and Dr. John Perkins. Stay tuned. So the reality is, if you, if the reality is, for those that are watching, and it's a hard truth, that if you can't meet God, you can't meet people. That's right. And if you don't meet happen. God, then you have a superficial relationship with people. people. You have a motive. <laughs> you have a motive with people, and you really want to use them. So if your motivation is not God, then that means you have a motive with people. Now, now let's say this. Well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me soften this a little bit. Uh, because people are the representative of God. Right. And so there are these people laws and there's these people found. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, but God keeps that steady love for both. Right. Right. You, you, in, in life. Yeah. So that's uh, and yeah, it's it's we have missed it. Racism, the way we practice, have messed things up. Why? 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 We messed things up. That's what this book is about. It, it, it's uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Defining Moments. I'm your host, Larry Nix, and I'm very delighted to have a very special guest, uh, Dr. John M. Perkins. You said something in, in the commercial break. You said racism has messed things up. Yes. What does that mean? That and, means and, and, and you're talking about your book, Dream With Me. Yeah, we think about there's more than one God, there's more than one race, and there's one race superior and the other one inferior. And, and basically, that is what sin really becomes. It becomes the lust of my flesh, the lust of my eye, and the pride of my life that I'm a little bit better than you. So the reality is, and, and I think you said this in the break, you said that if we can get God right, then we can get our relationships right. If, if we can really come to know this one God and to believe that he shed one blood for the one human race if we could under that's what the Bible is about that's what the Bible is about is the, is the Bible is the Bible the final inerrant authority I don't the way we have all together put it together uh, I would believe that there might be some mistakes in it. So I won't make it in error. But I think the centrality of the Bible is, is the Word of God. Now, when and you say enough is there, the truth is there, and it's enough truth to bring about conversion. And, and the centrality of truth, Jesus said, I am the way. Mm -hmm. I am the truth. I am the life. And my, and come to, he bids us to know him. Mm -hmm. And then he will begin the process of we are knowing ourselves. And now we won't need to make this God known to others. That's the central truth. And the Bible rolls out like that. So, so the others has got to be in there with me. Because we're equal. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, it, it means I'm loving myself. That's why he said a great commandment is to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And then to love your neighbor with all your self. Well, now, listen, I've, I've got I've to I've go back because you know the listeners and viewers say, wait, he said something that really Paul, caught my attention because all I've heard all of my life is that the Bible is inerrant, all right, and it, it, is, it is unmistakable about its intent and its purpose is the mind of God in, in print. And so you're saying you think it may have some mistakes. When, no, when, when, I, let me be careful. Let yeah, me be careful. Right, I want you to be careful. Let me care that. I believe that the word of God itself is in air. Got you. Okay. 
But I believe the putting together of that I hear you. That could be human okay. error. Human error. In that. And that's why I believe and the word says study. Study to study, show yourself. To show unto God a work that you do not be ashamed, rightly divine work. To. That's why you can't scan over the Bible. That's why you can't glaze the Bible. You've got to study the Bible, particularly to understand the, the, the context, right. to understand the uh, where where it was derived from, the the environment, the intent, the, you know, the, the, there are the many um, interpretations but to understand the intent and the context of the word. And, 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 and see, the purpose is that you would know the Bible is the word of God when you are born again of it. Mm -hmm. That's that the again. truth repeat, of it. Repeat, repeat that again. Who you know that the Bible is the word of God when you are born again. That's the Nicodemus story. That's the first big question and answer in the Bible. How can you be born again? How can you be born again? And so you would know that you're born because faith comes by hearing right. and hearing by the word of God. Now, when someone now, says, when they, when they say in Aaron, they're talking about the book. Got you. Okay. They're talking, and I'm saying the translations. The, even the translation. Okay. Right. But I'm saying the centrality of the word of God is the word of God. And that is no error because it set out to accomplish what he set out to accomplish, and that is you'll be born again. So, so all this in error stuff is just boogerman talk. Right, right. It's right. just boogerman talk. Right. You know that we are Christian by our love. We know that we are Christian, and by this shall men all know that you're my disciple. Right. And so that's just boogerman talk. Now listen, let, let's, uh, you, you've been, and you're known as many things. You're known as a, a philosopher, a great community developer. Uh, you've sat on boards, uh, Fortune 500 companies. In fact, you're leaving this weekend, uh, going to, uh, I think, Pepperdine. Pe Pepperdine. Uh, you know, colleges, they seek you for, for their, uh, you know, for various things to lecture. How did you get here? How did you get, to, how did John Perkins get to this point, you've come through the civil rights era, you've come through the Jim Crow era, you've come through segregation, you've come through integration. How did you get to this place? Young boy, this, they ask me this all the time. I heard the voice of Jesus saying, mm. come unto me and rest. I found in him a resting place. And he would make me glad. Wow. And that was the good news that I was a broken sinner and needed a savior. And he came into my life and I was born from above. And uh, boy, that is offered to a third grader just like it's offered to a PhD. God is no respecter person. So, for by grace I've been saved through faith. And that's not of myself. It is a gift of God. And he have had to lead me. Man, I have failed him so many times. And he picked me up. He forgave me of my sin. And I'm expecting to get to heaven. Because if he could get David there, it's so I can get there. So, so, so Dr. Person, how, how do you stay grounded? With 14 honorary doctor degrees, you're on boards of this, you're on boards of that. Fortune 500 CEOs, presidents, they, they invite you to, to lecture, presidents of colleges. How, how do you stay grounded, particularly with, with everybody cheering your name? I think it's the pain of life. The pain? Pain of life. I think pain wakes us up. When you can get pain, it feels like you might die. And you think about God as life. And suffering is a virtue. Suffering is a virtue. S suffering is a virtue. Mm -hmm. uh, without pain, there is no real gain. Even if you have to think of the pain that Jesus suffered for us, that's his suffering for us. Pain is a virtue. 
But God always got pain there. That we learn better in pain. Jesus as God on earth, as in Adam, he had to learn something. And you he believe and you believe and you believe it is through the instrument of pain. Instrument of pain. And so are you are you suggesting that all pain is not bad? It's a teacher. Oh. Pain is a teacher. Oh, I'm saying that seasons of suffering is, is, is a virtue. I think we should see. Uh, no, sacrificia suffering, not for yourself, become redemptive and a virtue. Now that's deep. Now what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It that means that. that sin, that, 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 that pain wakes up within us the depth of our own humanity. Mm. And it creates part of within us passion for others. Huh. Okay. Now, All right. Suffering for yourself is self-inflicted. Okay. But when you're suffering for us, Jesus said that greater love than no one in this than one was light on, and he learned obedience himself by the things that he suffered. So, are you suggesting that when you suffer, uh, you shouldn't go around holding yourself a pity party, but you should use suffering as a way? To understand the passion that the Lord has for us and for us then to portray that same kind of love or to reflect that same kind of love upon other people. That's what it means to be Christian is to be like Jesus. And he suffered for us. He's our Lord. A lot, a lot of folk want his glory. They don't want his suffering. They, want his, they, they, they want his cross. They, I, mean, I mean, they want his crown. They don't want his cross. They don't want Gethsemane. They don't want Gethsemane. Gethsemane is, by the time he got to the cross, I don't know whether he felt the pain. Although the pain was there, but he didn't feel it. I said to my wife, my wife and I were traveling last week, and I said the cross is very important. It is the symbol of, of the redemption. But the real story is, and one day I'm going to preach about it and talk about it, the real story is his journey to the cross. Right his, journey, his journey to Golgotha. His, right. his journey to, you know, Skull Hill. His, his, his walk on the Via Della Rosa. Well, that, that, that's what Gibson was trying to proclaim in his movie, The Passion. Right. And that's why so many people, they were talking about his pain. And I remember I was in the theater and people was crying. I said, don't cry. Right. I said, he can take it. He's taking mine. He's taking, and then I talked about some pain I had that was bigger than me. So have you had, have you had points that have become your defining moments? And, and are you suggesting that our defining moments is as a result of pain? Uh, many times. Many times, and it, it's psychological pain. I think some of the killing and the suicide, self-suicide, killing of others, I think a lot of that has to do with our unbearable pain. It's psychological pain. It's psychological pain. And, and even thinking of yourself negative becomes psychological pain. I'm worthless. That's not even healthy. Right. That, that, that. And, 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 you know, the Word of God says the enemy, uh, the enemy comes to lure you. Um, the thief cometh not. In fact, Jesus says in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, yeah. and to destroy. But I come that you may have life. And I, and I preach the sermon, thank God for the conjunction. Thank God for the but. Uh, but I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Oh, if the enemy can get you in a dark place and keep you in a dark place, then he can become victorious over your psyche and over your soul, which is his ultimate goal. Yes, and you, we all got to walk with some weariness of that, some weariness, and you can lose focus. You can lose, I think we can become too holy here now, because I'm not, I'm claiming it for myself in relationship to the question you had, how did I keep going? Right. Because I kept some of those memories, and the pain brought those memories. It made me conscious of God. You understand? And so uh, it's not the typical prosperity 
that we preach help well and right it's, it's not quite that that's a, that's a good place to stop because a lot of people have been talking about their prosperity gospel preaching ladies and gentlemen stay tuned we'll be right back in two minutes with our special guest dr john m perkins on defining moments So let's talk about, let's talk about, and we'll, and we'll get more involved in it, one, one Blood, your book, One Blood. Okay. What is One Blood all about? It's, it's about really trying to bring humanity back to there's one God, there's one mediator between God and man, and that man is Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it, that we all bleed the same. Uh, and, and, and we have created two races or more. That's what I want to do. That book is for this moment. It's for this dead end street we've got. Mm. We expect this book to have impact. We expect that when people read that, and say one blood, I think first they're going to say what that means. And then the idea of what we're trying to do here is help people to know that human being is God's representative you on earth. Mm -hmm. We were here creating his image right. to reflect his likeness. And, and, and that is Welcome back to Defining Moments. I am your guest, Larry Nix. This program, Defining Moments, is also brought to you in part by Muskelly Furniture. Muskelly Furniture, they're located, their uh, flagship store is located at 101 Airport Road in Pearl, Mississippi. They're one of seven stores, their latest store, open in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. If you have furniture needs or accessory needs, consider Muskelly Furniture at muskelly's.com. Com. The number is 601-939-6288. Also, by Astro Heating and Cooling, Mr. B.J. Bryant is the one to call. You can call his number at 601-373-1592. No job too small, no job too large. They accept major credit cards. Financing is available for qualified buyers. They're fair, they're honest, they're reliable. In fact, I use them myself. So, Astro Heating and Cooling, please call them. In our commercial break, and in fact, this is our last segment, Dr. Perkins, you're a very busy man. I, you know, you're you're all over the country. W will you come back? I'll be there. I love I love to have you back because it seems like an hour is just not enough time. Yeah, I'll be there. One blood in in the commercial break. We were talking about one blood. Your your book, one blood. What what is one blood all about? One blood is about the myth that there is more than one God, there are more than one human race, and that God has looked like created one inferior and the other one superior. Mm. And that we are created, human being was created to reflect the glory of God. He was created in his likeness and his image, and we are mixed up there. Why is it so hard for us to get that? I think sin and Satan is real. And, and there are some folk out there that if, if, if it rains, they're drowned because their nose are so high up in the air. Yeah, but sin and Satan. And the Bible, James tells us in the book of James how sin originates. From which comes fighting among you? And he said it comes from your own self. That you desire to have, you kill, you have not. And what is sin? Sin is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Those were the temptations of Jesus. He overcame those temptations, which made him a worthy lamb to die for our sin, so that his one blood could wash our sins away. What we are doing here is talking about central, authentic, incarnation of Christianity. One blood. And that we are saying it is quick and as profound as we can say it to, to get rid of some of the confusion. That's what one blood is about. So, 
So how do I cure myself? How do I cure? How do I begin to cure the environment that I've been brought up in, which I've been brought up in a lie, all right, and I've been brought up in distortion and an illusion and a superficial environment that I that the hue of my skin automatically makes me better, all right, and more superior. How do we cure ourselves of generations of of of, of lies? Well, that that's the task. Even sometimes perpetuated by people who say they love us. Oh yeah, and we perpetuate it ourselves when we believe it. Okay. So we've already so it's not only that the white folk got their superiority, we got our inferiority that is just as damaged to us as their superiority is damaging to them. You know what it's leading to? What? It's leading to the black uh, 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 genocide. It's leading to white genocide. It's only what kind of gun we use. White folks use, black folks use guns that kill them one by one. White folks get automatic and go into schools and churches and places and kill them. They are killing white folks. We are broken evenly. I, I think that's what we got to learn. We got to learn that we are sinners. We got to learn we are broken. And that Jesus came into the world to save sinners and to save this human race. So the first step is to realize that you are broken. It's oh, to admit. It's to have courage enough to admit that you are broken. Yes, the courage. Courage might not be the word, but the idea, because you're still going to be trembling and fearful. That how, how are they going to feel about me? Right. Whoever they yeah, are. Well, yeah, so, yeah, so courage. But, but, but that's the reality of what you're saying. The reality is that we got to come to know that we are broken. You can't get there without repenting. And that's what repenting is. To recognize I have sinned. Not just somebody out there has sinned. I have. I have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So salvation um, comes as a result of first recognizing that it is me, O oh Lord. It's me. It's the old song. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. It's not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord. Yes. Listen, we have three minutes left. In in the last three minutes, I know that you talked about this book. Um, It'll be on the market yeah. out there April the 1st. Okay, all right, April 1st. And how can they get it through Amazon? Amazon and all the bookstores. All, all, bookstores. The, all the bookstores, all Christian bookstores. You also talked about Pilgrim Progress. What does that mean? Well, it means the Christian life. That's uh -huh. another whole book right. that was written by John Bunyan okay. back in the 16th century. Okay. And that's a whole idea. It is a Christian pilgrimage. It is what happened to our life on this pilgrimage. That you're going to have in this life, the reality is, because people people have been told some, and I know that's a generality, the people have been told that when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, go to church, then everything's going to be all right, everything's going to be man, okay. Man that is born of a woman, this is finality. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Now extrapolate that. It Talk to me about that. Not only is it given you're gonna have that, some highs, but you're gonna have we, some lows. Right. It's not only given that we should believe on Jesus Christ, but that we should suffer for his name's sake. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. And so you got to accept pain, and you got to accept joy. I think the way possibly to experience pain is to allow your joy, create an expectation of joy that removes, or not remove, but cause you to endure the pain, like childbirth. Childbirth. You know you got to go through it. Right. So are you saying go ahead and accept it? Accept it by accepting the joy. It's going to burn. Accept pain by accepting the joy that, that the problem. pain will produce. 
And for the joy that was set before us, he endured the cross. And he expects us to bear that pain. And our great hymn said that, must Jesus bear this cross among them and those were all free. No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's one for you and me. So that trouble, I'm so glad the trouble don't last all way. But it means the trouble is coming. It's of a few days and full of trouble. David says, yea, though I walk through, the valley. through, not to, but yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, I'll fear no evil. Because thou, thou God, the Lord Jesus, our great shepherd, our great priest, he's with us. Okay. Dr. Perkins, thank you for being on Defining Moment. It has been a wonderful Defining Moment day for me just to spend time with you. Thank you. It's a joy to be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us on Defining Moment. We'll see you next week. And remember, there's hope for tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you. We'll see you next week the same time. Yes. All right, sir. Thank you very much.